Uh, okay, Ms. Albertson. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'll go ahead and um, move that resolution. Um, be it resolved that the Chelsea Farmers Market is established in the parking lot at 1010 South Main Street on each Wednesday from May 5th through October 27th, 2021. All right, thank you. Uh, Mr. Ian Ellie. I'll be happy to second that. Thank you, we have a motion and a second. Uh, if, uh, this will be a roll call vote, not only uh, because we're meeting remotely, but because also by uh, our own rules, we are required to uh, vote by roll call on uh, resolutions. Uh, so with the assistance of, oh, I forgot to call for questions or additional comments or discussion. And seeing none, we'll proceed to vote with the assistance of Madam Clerk. Madam Clerk? Yes, uh, Council Member Wisely. Making me think about spring. Uh, aye. Council Member Ian Ellie. Aye. Council Member Feeney. Aye. Mayor Johnson. Aye. Council Member Albertson. Aye. Council Member Patico. Aye. Council Member Quad. Aye. All right, thank you, and the motion passes. Uh, we come to our next item, um, item number three, which is the Chelsea Human Rights Commission Revised 2021 Plan. Mr. Ianelli, you're the liaison, and it looks like you submitted that item for council review tonight. So I'll turn the floor over to you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the Chelsea Human Rights Commission presented their 2021 annual plan to council in January. And uh, some updates have been made to the plan based on the feedback received. Uh, attached in the packet is the revised 2021 plan in final draft version, as well as the previous version with the edits uh, on the, uh, with the edits visible, so that people can see what was changed and what was updated. And um, and it's up for a motion to either accept or reject uh, for city council to accept or reject the Human Rights Commission 2021 annual plan. All right, thank you. Are there any uh, questions for Mr. Ianelli at this time? All right, Ms. Albertson. Um, I'd be very glad to make a motion to approve of the um, February 2021, February 1, 2021 to January 3 to 1, 2022 uh, HRC annual plan, but just with uh, three, um, just three um, changes. Um, they're not major changes from my perspective. Um, the first one would be um, on the revised plan, uh, the internal activities to strike number four which is establishing um, a social media presence, uh, HRC establishing uh, a social media presence for itself. Um, that, that's outside of the purview of the ordinance. Uh, the second one uh, would be in the external activities. And this one is just very minor. It's in number one, to please strike and climate, because that's also not within the context of the city's ordinance. And then the only other one would be um, number three uh, in the external um, activities. It would be to strike number three. Um, unfortunately, within our city ordinance, it does not provide for the HRC to establish celebrations. So with those three minor changes, I would make a motion to approve the plan. All right, thank you. Is there a second? Would council like to move forward with those changes uh, and the approval of the plan? All right, there is no second at this time. Mr. Feeney. I was gonna provide a second just for get us to the point of discussion. 
All right, thank you. We have a motion and a second. Uh, so the matter is open for uh, discussion uh, by council. Mr. Ianelli. Mr. Ianelli, you are muted. Thanks. Thank you. I had my hand raised because I was uh, questioning where where the motion would go with uh, without having a second. But now that there is a second, I'll withdraw that question. Leave it. Are there, Ms. Pacheco, you have your hand up? Yes, thank you. Uh, just to make a statement that I would be in favor of supporting the plan as presented um, without the minor changes. Thank you. Um, with respect to uh, the changes, I do think climate is outside their purview uh, and it's not something that's authorized by the ordinance. So that's certainly a change that I would support. And certainly uh, council uh, the other night at our visioning session uh, reviewed a little bit of a social media policy, which um, indicates that uh, social media would be handled by employees. It has not been finalized, um, but I, I, uh, I think that's one that's uh, probably best held off until that decision has been made. So I would certainly approve that change as well. Mr. Wisely. I just wanted to say I would be in support with the changes. Ms. Albertson. Uh, thank you. Um, I think it's important to understand that we cannot provide latitude um, to any of our commissions that are, that is in violation of our city charter. Um, we cannot ignore the city charter any more than we can ignore the charter of the state of Michigan nor the, nor the constitution of the United States. Each one of them, each one of those three documents is a guiding document. Uh, and, and we can't uh, pick and choose when we're going to follow the, the constitution of the United States any more than when we're gonna follow the constitution of the state of Michigan, nor the charter of the city of Chelsea. These are three guiding documents that have been approved by the attorney general's office of the state of Michigan. So we are required by law legislation, if not ordinance to follow our charter. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Albertson, would you be willing to amend your motion to allow uh, members of the HRC to carry out a community education program uh, on Martin Luther King Day Jr. So that the language tracks the ordinance? Yes, the only thing that the ordinance does not provide for is for HRC to establish celebrations. Certainly um, um, something which is as important as recognizing the essential work of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. is essential for all of our communities. It is celebration that we uh, that I'm taking exception to. Thank you. Thank you for would, that correction, Madam Mayor. Would you accept my, my friendly amendment to that? Yes. Yes, thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Feeney. Would you also accept that friendly amendment? I'm sorry, you're muted, Mr. Feeney. Uh, I would accept that. All right. Thank you. All right, is there any more discussion or comments uh, uh, from council? And if not, oh, Ms. Quas. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I, I wanted to voice that initially I was in support of this plan as is. Um, I do want to ask more questions and uh, dig into the social media aspect. Um, and what specifically is being called out that they don't have um, the responsibility or, or the, the right to do that. I just, I, I'm just wanting to learn more. Thank sure. you. Thank you. Ms. Albertson. Um, may I respond to Ms. Claus? Or would you prefer you to do that, Madam Chair? Uh, you can certainly, uh, uh, this is discussion topic, so you can certainly provide your response. Okay. 
the ordinance is written um, very narrowly in terms of, of um, the latitude of the Human Rights Commission. Nowhere, nowhere in the ordinance does it, does it stipulate or even allude that the Human Rights Commission will establish a social media presence. There is no other commission and no other committee that has a social media presence. So we're following the ordinance by, by um, having to say no. The ordinance does not provide for developing a social media presence that would be monitored solely by the HRC without any oversight by the city council and reminding city council that the HRC, all members of the HRC serve at the pleasure of the city council. They do not have the latitude to establish an independent social media presence. Thank you. All right, thank you. I don't see any other hand raised. We do have a motion pending. It's to approve the HRC annual plan with the following amendments, which is to strike uh, internal activities number four regarding social media, strike uh, the words and climate from external activity number one, and revise uh, external activity number three. Do you care, uh, members of the HRC will participate in providing a community wide Martin Luther King Day? education program in collaboration with other community organizations. Uh, that's a pending motion. Um, it's been seconded uh, all in, we will actually with the assistance of Madam Clerk, uh, please call roll call. Okay, council member Ianelli. Aye. Council member Feeney. Aye. Council Member Wisely. Aye. Council Member Patico. Nay. Council Member Quaz. Aye. Mayor Johnson. Aye. Council Member Albertson. Aye. All right, thank you. And that motion with uh, the amendments uh, passes. Thank you very much. We'll proceed on to the next item, which is uh, Chelsea Human Rights Commission policy recommendations. Mr. Ianelli. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, at the last uh, Human Rights Commission, uh, they unanimously voted to um, on the following policy recommendations. I'm just going to read them verbatim. Uh, Ms. Morrell Samuels is here also uh, to answer any questions that anyone may have um, specifically uh, to the Human Rights Commission and the uh, agenda item. <clears throat> the Chelsea Human Rights Commission is charged, among other duties, to make periodic reports and recommendations to city council and city manager on ways to improve city government programs and ordinances designed to eliminate discrimination or to remove the effects of past discrimination. Pursuant to the report presented by Bruce C. Judge to the City Council on February 1st, 2021, the Human Rights Commission recommends that the City Council review and revise as necessary Chelsea Police Department policies related to the surveillance of individuals participating in peaceful protest activities and the issuance of citations connected with such activities, especially to minors. Specifically, we recommend that images of individuals who are engaged in lawful protest activities should not be retained. Further, we recommend that the charges brought against individuals participating in the July 31st, 2020 racial justice protest be dropped in order to avoid any perception of selective enforcement. Going forward, we ask that the council consider forming a citizen advisory board to provide public input to the police department and assist in problem solving. Thank you for your consideration of these recommendations. Thank you, Mr. Ianelli. Are there any questions from council at this book? Uh, just kind of remind everyone to please mute. Uh, if you're at home, please. Uh, we are picking up some background noise. Uh, Ms. Pacheco, you have your hand raised. Uh, thank you. 
Uh, just to make a motion, I'd like to make the motion to accept the policy recommendations of the Human Rights Commission. All right, thank you. Is there a second? Ms. Quas. I would second. All right, thank you. The motion has been made and seconded, so the matter is now open for discussion, comments, or questions. Ms. Albertson. So I'm sorry to be repetitive here, but I have to remind council that the Human Rights Commission, as well as the Planning Commission and the Sustainability Commission and the Transportation Commission and the Housing Advisory Commission do not have the latitude to establish policy. It is the city council's responsibility to establish policy. Any of these entities can make a recommendation to city council. They may not be, they may not, they do not have the latitude to establish policy. I'm asking council to please adhere to our city charter. Thank you. All right, thank you. Mr. Ianelli, you have your hand raised. Yes, um, Ms. Albertson, these are policy recommendations. These are not actual policy uh, that they're, they're writing or suggesting that we, we implement. These are simply policy recommendations that the Human Rights Commission is bringing forward, which is, I believe, part of their, their charge is to present recommendations. All right, thank you, uh, Mr. Ianelli. Uh, I also believe the Human Rights Commission is acting outside of their scope of authority uh, by making these recommendations, but their duties are uh, were intentionally limited by ordinance uh, and after very thorough discussion regarding that um, and are limited to making public reports and recommendations specifically on ways to improve city government programs and ordinances with the lens of design to eliminating discrimination or to remove the effects of past discrimination. Further, as Ms. Albertson noted, the commission shall not address itself to questions of whether specific instances of discrimination have occurred, but rather shall address itself to needed changes. Oops, that's sorry, that's uh, with respect to uh, complaints that are made. But it says the commission shall not have any inherent authority to take any unilateral action and relevant to its research or recommendations, nor may carry out any programs or other plan it may formulate without being expressly authorized by a majority vote of the city council, and then may only act within the scope of the authorization granted. Uh, for, but uh, with, so I, I do think they've acted outside their scope of authority. Uh, Mr. Wisely. I'm curious where it says, uh, Chelsea is the only community in Washington County to issue such citations. Uh, a larger similar protest occurred and Ann Arbor and Ypsilanti. I, I continue to hear that we, meeting after meeting, but I never hear whether those other communities actually pulled a permit to do what they did, whereas I don't believe that was the case here. Thank you, Mr. Risley. Um, just one other side, it's more of an aside that uh, many of the items being uh, uh, this, uh, are in this agenda item are items today. Uh, Ms. Albertson. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Quaz. That, does that tie us to doing them and then are the next agenda items necessary? But if these are just recommendations, I would think not. Is that right? Certainly, they are just recommendations. Um, but as we always look at, is whether uh, anybody has the ability or scope or is authorized to make those recommendations. So you were, in fact, certifying, in my opinion, uh, that they have the authority to do so. All right, with that, uh, we have a motion I, and a second. I don't see any other hands raised for discussion, comments, or questions. So with the assistance of Madam Clerk, we'll take a vote on the motion to accept the recommendations. Okay, Council Member Wisely. Nay. Council Member Ian Ellie. Uh, aye. Council Member Feeney. Nay. 
Mayor Johnson. Nay. Council Member Albertson. No. Council Member Pacheco. Aye. Council Member Quas. Aye. All right, thank you. Uh, the motion was denied and we'll uh, move on to the next agenda item, which is uh, Mr. Ianelli again and his agenda item is entitled Direct Chelsea Police to Repeal Citations Issued for Impeding Traffic to Protesters During Summer 2020. Thank you, Mr. Ianelli. Thank you, Madam Mayor and members of council. In light of the independent review of the CPD tactics that were utilized for issuing citations for impeding traffic during last summer's Black Lives Matter protests, City Council should implore the Chief of Police to call off any further investigation into issuing these citations as well as drop any and refund all, <coughs> excuse me, all charges that have been issued thus far. These citations are creating a perception that the city is not a welcoming community to those who utilize their First Amendment rights with peaceful and civil disobedience to fight for racial justice and protesting against the national plague of police brutality. Chelsea is the only community in Washtenaw County to have issued such citations. Larger similar protests occurred regularly in Ann Arbor and Ypsilanti, which blocked traffic on major roadways, yet police there while present did not issue citations to the protesters. In late January, the city of Detroit dropped charges related to protests against 238 individuals in the city. As there is currently a case of residents fighting these citations in court, which is bringing further legal scrutiny and further eyes upon our community, our own independent investigation has determined that this has, quote, given rise to inevitable questions over selective enforcement and concerns about CPD's even-handedness and impartiality. Would like to propose the motion to direct the chief of police to rescind and refund the citations. All right, thank you for that explanation of uh, your agenda item. Uh, I would note that city attorney Peter Flintoff is here tonight uh, to uh, answer any questions that council may have. Ms. Pichico. Um, I would like to make a motion, but uh, is it the council's pleasure to have uh, the city attorney address questions prior to a motion? I think that would be appropriate, Ms. Pacheco. Uh, Mr. Feeney. Yeah, I'd like to ask the city attorney if you know, in his, do we have the authority to undertake the motion? Mr. Flintoff? If you pass that motion, there's a question as to <clears throat> whether or not it's effective under your charter. I think that's what you're referring to because it's the chief of police in the police department that has the right to issue the citations uh, in your own charter. So an objection to your motion, and I'm not giving an opinion because this is the first time I have seen this, uh, but there's going to be a question as to whether or not <clears throat> what you would do if the police chief and the police department refuse to go along with your motion. And someone's going to have to answer that. All right. Thank you, uh, Mr. I'm going, to, I'm going to mute myself until you call on me, if you please. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Flenna. Ms. Albertson, did you have a question? I believe Mr. Ianelli had his hand up first, Madam Mayor. Oh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Ianelli? Mr. Flinoff, um, is there, I mean, in terms of from the legal perspective, um, I had I had drafted this motion 
on the basis of the question that was asked of Mr. Judge as to whether uh, city council was in a position to request this of the police department. Now in reviewing the city charter, my understanding is the chief of police reports to the city manager. If this motion is amended to say, to direct the city manager to direct the chief of police to rescind and refund the citations, would that be more appropriate? Well, are you referring to the sentence in the charter it's, uh, seven point ten seven point one zero and about the fourth line the chief of police should be under the direction of the city manager and be in command and be responsible for the operation of the police department is it is that the clause yes sir it's true. Yeah, okay well the chief has his discretion, he's exercised it, and I suppose then you're going to you're going to look to the city manager to direct the chief to change his mind and to countermand him. When it says I when it says under the direction, I don't think it means that he's his boss and overrules him. I think he directs him as to problems and areas of administration. Chief of police has a separate oath he's taken and he's exercised and he's in the police force. And the, the charter goes on, says the police force shall have and execute all the amenities, privileges, and powers of police officers under the common law and the statute of the state of Michigan. So there was undoubtedly going to be a clash of uh, loyalties here if this is implemented. All right, thank you, Ms. Albertson. Um, Mr. Flintoff, it sounds as if you're saying that that the police department is an independent entity and and uh, operates separately from the the municipal government. First sentence of the same paragraph says the council shall provide for establish and maintain within the administrative division of the city a police department. Could you just elaborate that just a little bit, please? Well, and, and, your and, interpretation. And, and, elaborate and your interpretation. To, the next words are to enforce all laws and all ordinances and codes which are enforced in the city and to preserve peace and good order in the city. Okay, just one final question then. Can you see any sort of context in which these citations can be mitigated? My obligation as the city attorney is to represent the city before all courts and tribunals. That's under some. This motion that was brought, I think you all know, was to challenge a state statute because the citations are written under a state statute, not a city ordinance. That motion has been argued, it's been brief, it's set for a decision on February 22nd. This very question could be put off and the council can look at it after the court makes a decision on the motion. It just means that the cases can go forward. It may be that the city wants to take an appeal. It may be that the respondents want to take an appeal. What I've done in this case is ask the court to advise the attorney general under the court rule that provides for that that a state statute was being questioned. Either way on that. We've had their oral argument. I think that a decision on this question by this council at this time would not move this conversation forward. 
because the police, if they dismiss these citations, would have to go back through the same process should a, another impeding traffic event in their estimation require prosecution back before the same judge over the same territory and we'd be in the same situation. The hope for facilitation is what everybody would think should be the step forward. And um, I haven't seen anything in that uh, realm develop. And I asked and it doesn't happen. So if you pass this motion tonight, I can see that future prosecutions, exactly what the motion says, that future, future prosecutions should go forward. In fact, the added element here is that having gone through all this work on these cases, presented to the court, if we come back at a later date and have to argue the same thing all over again, our arguments are diminished in the future. So that's maybe a long answer, but I think that this is something that you could take up a couple of weeks later after the decision is made, because you don't know what it is. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Planoff. Um, I do have a question. Um, there are three different branches of government. There's the legislative branch, which makes the laws. There's the executive branch, which enforces the law. And then there's the judicial branch of, of, of uh, deciding the merit of the law as well as uh, the merit of its application. Um, which function uh, does city council sit in? I think an analogy to the federal system is exactly appropriate here because the city council of uh, this charter establishes the functions and they're not clearly broken into the three as we understand it under the United States Constitution. And the city can act, all city council can certainly act in an administrative capacity uh, if it wanted to under various statutes that are, that are out there. So I just, as a broad stroke, I, can't comment on that at this time, they shouldn't. Okay, thank you. Mr. Ianelli, you have your hand raised. I believe Ms. Pacheco had her hand up before. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see that, thank you. Ms. Pacheco? Thank you. Um, I have two questions, I'll just do one at a time for Mr. Flanoff. Uh, Mr. Flanoff, it, 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 I'm, tr I'm trying to understand here what you're saying. So. Uh, the, the first question from council member Feeney was, is it possible to, for us to pass this motion? And I, I, I'm understanding, if I'm understanding correctly, what you said was uh, there, it is possible, but it would open up a question about whether or not the police chief or the police department would refuse to go along with that motion. So the question there is, um, would it be legal for the police chief to decide to rescind the citations? Of course. Okay, and I have a second question. Do you want me to wait? No, I think I answered your first question. Go ahead. That I'm was your first question. Yeah, it is. I'm asking the mayor. Okay. You're on mute. Under our rules, Mr. Ianelli then would have the opportunity and we would have to swing back to Ms. Pacheco. Mr. Ianelli. Thank you. Um, Mr. Flinoff, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to work around this. I mean, I understand there's the, the legal implications about what, what we're doing and, and saying we can, we could, we could go through with this motion and direct the chief to rescind and refund. He has a right to refuse. Um, 
okay, can I change the language to say instead of direct, ask nicely? I mean, we're this this, this motion is a, is in is in response to a public outcry, an overwhelming amount of letters that we've been receiving from the public about this situation and what it's representing our community to those around us. We've got media here watching us and it's our duties and, and it's our responsibility as the elected officials of this town to try to make this situation right on behalf of the residents who are paying for all of this, including the, the, the most importantly, the police department and how we, and, and they've asked us to, to request to have these, these charges dropped. And that's what we're trying to do here. And I'm, I'm, I'm getting a lot of legal terminology about how to do it the right way. I want to do it the right way. That's all I want to do. Do I ask you as our attorney to stop this, stop you, whatever you're doing in court in terms of, in terms of, uh, working on behalf of the city to, to fight the uh, tickets. My obligation is to represent the city and the court. I have not authorized anything. I don't authorize anything. I am there to respond. If this case were to go forward, it would be a formal hearing before uh, the judge. In point of fact, because of the COVID, no formal hearings are, on this matter are, have been scheduled. And I understand that they're not unlikely to be scheduled in the foreseeable months, uh, just across the board. Jury trials are also a thing of the past, except for felons who are in the jail. That'll be the case throughout 2021. Now, you're asking me <clears throat> to give you a way to get around language that's in the charter. I can't do that. The charter can be changed, and you can have other words to take you to the place where you want to get to. But if you adopt this at this time, the chief will be faced with uh, a division of loyalties. And now how he's going to handle it, I don't know. And obviously I don't think I can be his attorney on that matter. And I can't answer it for him. Thank you, Ms. Pichica. Uh, Mr. Flintoff, do you, can you speak to any precedent for the city uh, reducing or dismissing charges for civil citations in your experience? I don't know of any time at the city of Chelsea or the village of Chelsea uh, where the council has come forward and directed the uh, police department to uh, act in any particular way on the citation once it's been put before the court. That wasn't the question, though. The question was, what has the has the city ever dismissed or? I know, I know you're not interested. I, I I'm sorry. I, I'm going to ask everyone just before you ask your question, Mr. Flinoff, just remind everyone to please mute. Uh, we are picking up some background conversations, which are uh, making it difficult to hear the conversation, uh, the questions being asked, and the answers provided. Thank you, Ms. Pacheco. Yeah. So the, the question is not, has the council directed uh, the city attorney, city manager, or the police judges per their discretion? Oh, of course. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Flynn, I've just, uh, I think this is a challenging area, certainly, and uh, Everyone uh, would like to uh, uh, uphold their duties uh, and obligations uh, as well as follow the law. Um, as I hear you say it, under our charter, we don't have uh, the authority to directly dismiss or uh, rescind charges, uh, correct? Correct. Thank you. Uh, 
And I have a part two question, but under rules, I'll have to circle back. <laughs> uh, Ms. Albertson. This is gonna sound terribly naive, uh, Mr. Flintoff, but can we not identify at some sort of appropriate pathway for resolving this problem? Yeah. Well, as a private citizen, I would hope that there was a facilitation and a conversation, as has been suggested, I think, uniformly tonight. And to resolve this matter other than the way it's going. That's my personal opinion. I, but I do not know the person to speak to. And I've tried. Uh, for, for clarification, you mean as an attorney, you uh, attempted facilitation? I have, that is when, that is when spoken about among the attorneys, but we can't get anywhere. It was, and it's not because one side wants to and one side doesn't. It doesn't appear that uh, there's any way to, to, to negotiate anything. All right, thank you, Ms. Uh, I'm not sure who was next, Ms. Albertson or Ms. Pacheco. Uh, looks like Ms. Pacheco. Yes. I, I don't have a question. I'm just in line to make a motion, please. There, we'll see if there are other questions. Ms. Albertson? I don't know if this is, if my timing is appropriate, but if we if we can't find the pathway to do this legally in the way that our community wants us to do it. There's nothing that bars us from coming back together as a council in a work session and trying to come up with some sort of way to, to address our, um, to address, to redress this with our community, not address it, but to provide redress to our community. In, in in some sort of way, which I have no idea what that would be right now, but I, I don't think that I don't think that we should stop trying. Thank you. Thank you, um, Mr. Ianelli. Did you have a question, Mr. Ianelli? You are muted. Sorry, question and and maybe even an, uh, another comment. I guess I. Mr. Flinoff hasn't really clarified for me the best way to put this motion forward tonight that stays within the realm of the city charter. Um, although my understanding is that the this motion can still go forward as it is. Um, I'm I'm all for amending this motion in whatever way is is amicable. Um, the fact of the matter is I want this matter brought forward tonight and I want it voted on tonight. All right. Thank you, Mr. Annelli. Um, I, I think certainly this complicated issue, especially the way our, our, our charter is written. I don't see the way the charter is written that we have the authority to direct the police department, uh, the uh, police department and providing prospective policy. Those are sort of our remedies. It's that, or our, our actionable items. Is, is that your understanding? I think you're reading the language of the charter correctly. All right, thank you. Mr. Ianelli? Again, with all due respect to the charter, um, according to the US Department of Justice, it says, quote, although not generally acknowledged by the public, police agencies have always had civilian oversight through elected mayors, city council, prosecutors, courts, and state and federal legislation. Um, and I don't, I, I, I feel that that does give, that city council has some oversight over 
the actions of the police department and and however making this recommendation this evening is un, is would be covered by that thank you mr feeney can i respond yes you may mr Clena. mr anelli a recommendation is one thing an order is another your motion is to direct the chief to rescind uh, all citations and refund all citations. I don't think you can refund. That's the court to do that if there's been a fine paid. But if you direct him to rescind, that's an order. Thank you, Mr. Planoff and uh, Mr. Feeney. Yeah, it's, we're at um, an uncomfortable impasse that um, really being asked to consider it or to do something that we don't have specific authority for. But on the other hand, I mean, essentially, city council is the police oversight committee. That's what we are. And um, we have, you know, I, I think in, in balance... You know, the police did a great job for six weeks of protecting the marchers. And um, and we're really transparent about what was going to transpire in the seventh week. And that's what transpired. Um, it came at, you know, ultimately since between then and now, great distress for a number of people who experienced it. But... We're at a point where, um, as an earlier commenter made, um, we've got a lot of work to do. And we need to find a way forward. And some of the comments that I heard um, were very impressive. Um, the threatening emails we've all received, or at least I received, not so impressive. But like I said, we've got a lot of work to do. And so we could quibble about the, uh, the method of doing it, but um, that, I think net net, we're going to set a dangerous precedent that we're going to have to live with the consequences of if we go forward, but we're at a place where we're totally stuck and we need to be unstuck. Thank you, Ms. Albertson. Uh, uh, Ms. Pacheco, and then Mr. Iandelli, and then me. I, I think Ms. Uh, Pacheco is with pending a motion, correct, Ms. Pacheco? Uh, Ms. Albertson, you actually come up next in the queue. Okay. I'm wondering if there would be significant difference if in the wording of the motion, we simply recommend to the police chief if we change the word to recommend, would that would that provide some pathway to this, Mr. Flintoff? I can't answer the question. It provides a pathway, but it would be a recommendation as as opposed to a direct order. Okay, so if we if we if Mr. Ionelli, for example, were to change some of the wording of his motion to um, motion to recommend to the police chief, then we would be on the right side of the charter. You wouldn't offend the charter. <laughs> we would not offend the charter. Okay, okay, <laughs> thank you, thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Ianelli. Thank you, um, that's exactly what I was uh, about to bring up. I would like to amend uh, the, the um, the agenda item to say instead of direct uh, to recommend on behalf of rescind and refund citations impeding traffic citations for impeding traffic related to last summer's protests. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Planoff, I have a question regarding that. Uh, you spoke earlier uh, with respect to the rescinding and refunding all citations. Uh, is that something the police chief would even have the authority to do once he to do? That's the part of it he can't he can't do. 
All right, thank you, Ms. Albertson. Um, yes, however, that does not mean that city council would not be able to continue discussing that specific aspect of this, if we so chose. Right. All right, are there any other questions for Mr. Uh, Flintoff at this time? All right, seeing none, I uh, will proceed to a vote, please. Or a motion, sorry. That's first. Ms. Pacheco, you've had your hand raised for quite some time. Yeah, thank you. Um, I, I'm just going to uh, read a, a statement and then the motion as amended. Um, I, I, I am not um, an attorney, a federal prosecutor, or a judge, right? I, as far as I uh, know, uh, other than the mayor being a, an, a, an attorney, none of us are on the council. Um, I'm an elected official, and as we all are, uh, ran for city council office and elected to represent the people of this community to try to make sure that everyone has a voice at the table and to speak up for the people who are reaching out to us. Um, and the, the, there have been plenty of people reaching out to us over the, the course of the last several months. Um, we all know Chelsea is a small community. We're a tight community. We know each other. Our kids go to school together. We go to church together. We go, uh, we work together. We play together. And since last summer and maybe even before that, um, we've seen this significant rift um, escalate in our, comp in our community. Council to its credit, has had listening sessions, public work sessions, council meetings, even hired the third party law firm to do the limited review of the police procedure in order to help give us context on some of these outstanding issues. We've heard from hundreds of community members and they have been asking lots of questions about what kind of community we want to be, what kind of model we want to set for our children, and yet, Every meeting, each new meeting, next meeting, there are more questions. Okay. Even the Bruce Judge Police Review Report raised yet more questions. Tonight, even Mr. Flinoff had yet more questions. We have had some review of policy and practices and considerable discussion about the role that discretion, police discretion, city council discretion, city manager discretion, plays in addition to the letter of the law. Someone mentioned in this conversation that we heard Bruce Judge answer at the February 1st council meeting that he thought the initial citation of the juveniles on July 31st was a matter of police discretion. And then we heard him that same night answer council member Feeney that Bruce Judge thought it was possible to dismiss the charges. Overwhelmingly, the people that have reached out in public comment and public correspondence have supported dismissing these charges and have shared their desires for the city to do the hard work of moving our community forward with steps towards healing and reconciliation and to answer some of all of these questions about how do we address discretion in our policies, discretion in our management practices, and discretion in our leadership. I'd like to see that too. I support this motion in particular as a first step and other steps towards healing the rift in our community and demonstrating that we all as community leaders can acknowledge that there are ways we can work to make this community stronger and better. And I'm sure that we all want that. So I will make the motion tonight to recommend. Ms. Pacheco, I do need to interrupt you because you made the comment. I do have to allow someone else to have the floor at this time. You don't get to make the comment and the motion. So I will swing back to you if nobody else wants to speak, but that's our protocol. <laughs> Mr. Feeney? Just a procedural question. I thought that uh, Mr. Ianelli had made an amended motion. And so I don't know if we have a motion on the floor right now. No, I, I believe his was more a clarification of his agenda item. Is that correct, Mr. Ianelli? That's correct. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, with that, uh, there are no other comments or questions. Uh, so, Ms. Pichico, if you would like to make the motion, you can do so now at this time. 
Sure, thank you. I'll make the motion to recommend on behalf of council, the chief of police to rescind and refund citations for impeding traffic related to last summer's protests and call off any further identification of protesters and issuing of future citations thereof. All right, thank you. Uh, is there a second? Ms. Albertson, you have your hand raised. Oh, I thought perhaps Mr. Ianelli would second, but if, if Mr. Ianelli is not going to second, I will second. All right, thank you. We have a motion and a second, and the matter is open for council discussion, comments, or questions. All right, uh, I uh, still, uh, I have some concerns regarding the motion as I believe I heard Mr. Flinoff to say that the police does not have the authority to rescind or refund uh, decisions made by the judge. Uh, Ms. Quaz? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I thought you were going to uh, speak to Mr. Flintoff. Sorry about that. That's okay. Um, I, because I didn't have any questions for Mr. Flintoff, I, I didn't speak during that portion, but I do want to voice my support for this recommendation, this motion. I just, I, I look back at history like a lot of the residents have brought up. And I think how many laws we've overturned and we've changed because they were wrong. Yes, they're laws, but we don't abide by these racist laws any longer. And I don't think it's hyperbolic to look at Hong Kong and other, other countries and look at these as not warnings. I think there's such a way forward in our community and I, I love this community and that's why I wanted to be on this council. Um, and I just think this is a step forward to change. If this isn't the right way, let's get to the right way. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, the question that I have for council um, is when you make this decision, you are making a decision of precedence. Um, and the, there's two different items of precedent that are going to have to be considered by council is one, and I think this alludes to the, refers to the point that Mr. Flinoff is making or made, um, and that is um, if there is another group uh, that comes in protests and it does not get a permit and uh, is uh, impeding traffic uh, under the Constitution uh, and First Amendment and uh, to ensure we don't viewpoint discrimination. If we, the city does not proceed with the tickets issued, uh, the city would be unable, as I understand it, to proceed with tickets going forward because the city would be open to viewpoint discrimination. Is that correct, Mr. Flinna? You're muted. You have it correct. Thank you. All right. So the question for council uh, seems to be whether we uh, want to enforce have this law and be able to enforce state law or not. Um, so, so that's one matter of, of precedent. Ms. Pacheco? A uh, question for Mr. Flintoff. Um, Mr. Flintoff, does the Chelsea Police Department have under its discretion uh, the ability to choose whether or not to uh, give civil citations. Discretion, when you use that term, it doesn't mean arbitrary, ar acting arbitrary and capricious, I think what you mean. It means to have exercise and judgment, okay? But if, you're, if you say discretion is willy-nilly, then I'd pick a little bit about your question. 
Well, not willy-nilly. I mean, we have seen in this instance, there were dozens, hundreds of people that were protesting. 18 of them got citations on July 31st. Somehow there was some criteria and discretion used for ticketing 18 and not 118. I grant you that. And all of these circumstances, which you call discretion, which maybe somebody would conclude listening to listening to a hearing on one of these, that there was arbitrary decision made. Okay. And that might lead the trier of fact, the judge, to say this particular citation ought to be dismissed, or if they find a pattern of discrimination that shows a plan well, then it might be the court takes out all of the all of the cases, but that should not happen now on this motion for summary disposition because we haven't gotten to a hearing. Could that uh, have now, happened? Just a minute. I want to say one thing. Okay. The policy of this office on these matters is that there's an open book, and we have made all of the reports on all the cases available to the defendants. In fact, we have sent them. They haven't had to request it. So all the opportunity of individuals to argue in front of this judge as to the legitimacy of any of these citations or any of these decisions that were made will be afforded to them to the fully. To the fullest extent, excuse me. I wanted to make that point. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Flinta. And, and, and the second matter that I wanted to raise for council discussion is, um, and this is the part that I, I am concerned uh, about council. Uh, uh, stepping into making a decision, stepping into the role of, of the executive and the judicial branches without any standards about how to do that. Um, and that's, I, I think it's certainly appropriate for council to have prospective policy about that and uh, determine uh, set general policy about uh, that. But I have a real concern uh, that um, that we look carefully um, and understand what our standards will be, both ethically uh, and and about which cases we're going to. Are we going to do it for every case that somebody gets charged with a citation or every misdemeanor that comes before? What's our standard for? In, uh, 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 directing the police or ask recommending to the police to uh, issue charges or not issue charges. What What is our standard for doing that? Is it based on uh, the political affiliations of someone? Is it based on uh, someone who, uh, our neighbor that we like, what what are the standards for doing it? Because I think that's a really important conversation. It's certainly one uh, that prosecutors and judges, they all have code of ethics um, and they all have standards that they utilize. What are our standards for, for, for doing that in any type of uh, civil or criminal citation? Mr. Ianelli? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, with regard to your two points, um, yes, we are setting a precedent. Um, we're setting a precedent um, in terms of what we've been called to act upon um, in response to what's happened in our community. Um, is it our role? Uh, yes, we are elected by the residents of this community to represent them. And it's our duty as the elected officials to, to carry out what the community wants us to carry out. Yes, it's our discretion whether or not we decide to carry that with us or not. 
But in terms of setting precedent and in terms of what our role as the elected officials of this community are, I believe that we are within what we're elected to do. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Ian Ellie. Ms. Albertson? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Well, there's no question that your, your argument is uh, completely valid, but there's also um, no question that our community is demanding something beyond what, what the legal foundation is. If we were a large urban area, I might be thinking differently about this, but we are small and we are visible to one another. And, and while we may, in fact, go out on a very, very wobbly limb and set some sort of precedent by making this recommendation, I think that we have, as Mr. Ianelli just said, we do have a responsibility to, to the, the fervent voice of our community to, to respect that voice. And, um, and if we are setting a precedent and one day we regret this, then we will all come back together and we will figure that out. But, but as everyone has said, we have got to start someplace to bring about positive change. And I, for one, am willing to risk whatever this president is in order to start calming the voice that is demanding this of us. Thank you. All right, thank you. Are there any other uh, questions or comments or discussion this time? Thank you. I, I'm just going to say, but I think it's a very challenging issue. Uh, um, and I think there are a lot of considerations, factual, legal, uh, appropriate roles of each uh, entity to consider. And it, it's not an easy one, um, as, as everyone has noted and, and certainly has debated, which I certainly appreciate. Um, it's not a, going to be, uh, I think there are a lot of opportunities for uh, further discussion uh, and prospective policy making. Um, and uh, there are a number of factors to consider, and it's certainly not an easy decision uh, either way. With that, um, we'll call uh, on the motion uh, with the assistance of uh, Madam Clerk, if you could please do roll call. Okay, Council Member Feeney. Aye. Council Member Pacheco. Aye. Council Member Wisely. Please get on the sidewalk. Aye. Mayor Johnson. Aye. Council Member Albertson. Aye. Council Member Ian Ellie. Aye. And Council Member Quaz. Aye. All right, we'll proceed on to our next item, which is uh, to investigate options for a full analysis of the CPD. Ms. Quaz, that's your item, so you get the floor. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, one of the action items from Bruce C. Judge's accepted report is, quote, further inquiry and review from this body, quote, as the scope of his report was limited to events which occurred on or related to Friday, July 31st, 2020. However, Mr. Judge referenced in our February 1st, 2021 City Council meeting that an investigation with such an expanded scope, quote, might be beyond the scope of what his office would do, quote. Uh, this agenda item is to direct staff to investigate firms and other entities, both recommended by Mr. Judge and others, that would be able to complete a more robust analysis of the Chelsea Police Department, including, but not limited to, photographic evidence retention and use policies, hiring policies, social media policies, use of police discretion, reporting practices and policies, best practices in policing, training, complaint handling, and oversight to conduct, to review and evaluation of present CPD policies and practices and recommend whatever reforms may be needed. 
and this was something we talked about in the goals and visioning session. Um, and so I wanted to bring this today. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Quaz. It is something uh, that we specifically discussed in our visioning session last week. Uh, and I think had uh, general support. Uh, are there any questions or at this time or would someone like to bring forth a motion? Mr. Feeney? Yeah, I'll make the motion. Let me pull it up here real quick. I'd like to move that we direct staff to put together a RFP for independent third party analysis of the Chelsea Police Department's policies and practices as referenced above. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Pacheco? I'll second that motion. All right, thank you. We have a motion uh, and a second the matter. The floor is open for discussion, comments, or questions. And seeing none, we'll proceed to vote on the motion with the assistance of Madam Clerk. Madam Clerk? Yes, Council Member Ian Ali. Aye. Council Member Feeney. Aye. Council Member Wisely. Nay. Council Member Pacheco. Aye. Council Member Quaz. Aye. Mayor Johnson. Aye. Council Member Albertson. Aye. All right, thank you. The motion passes. We're on to item number seven, which is. I'm sorry. Uh, yep. Item number seven, resolution establishing authorized signatory for agreement with Oakland County. Mr. Hannafan. Thank you, members of Council Mayor Johnson. This is a